Hello, hello, I'm Tracy Pierce. Thanks for joining me today for this Live with the Animals video series. So this series was born out of what was happening in the world during, you know, here in the US when the pandemic started to happen. Things were shutting down, life seemed so different and strange, and I really wondered what the animals thought about all of this. So my animal friends really encouraged me to start making this video series and talk with the animals, see what they had to say about it. And it's really just kind of blossomed from here and all kinds of animals are now coming forward to me who want to be a part of this Live with the Animals video series. So it's really been a lot of fun. So today we're gonna talk with a wasp. So I've got a couple pictures I wanna show you. When I came upon this wasp, it was very much like intuitionally pinging me, like take my picture. And so like in this picture, it was um, standing this way and then it would change positions and like be sure to get me at this angle <laughs> kind of thing. So um, in this picture, it's actually kind of looking like, it seemed like it was looking right at me. So this is the image we'll use today for the wasp. Um, but it was just, this boss was, seemed very much like an individual. It was trying to get my attention and wanted to show off and make sure I got pictures of it from all different angles. So if you're joining me here live, as a reminder, um, if you're on Facebook, if you have a, a question or a comment, go ahead and just type that into the comment section. If you're here on Zoom with me, click on the chat box button on the bottom of your Zoom and it should pull up the chat box and you can type your questions in. So I'm going to go ahead and just get quiet, start tuning into this wasp and see what it would like to share with us today. So very right, like right away it brings forward this buzzing quality and there's a real sharpness kind of like precision I'm seeing um, like it doesn't look like this one has a stinger but um, like a, a stinger on this kind of insect that's very sharp it's showing me that's part of its personality so is it is it about you specifically as an individual wasp or is this more like the blueprint of a wasp or like wasp ness, if you will. It's saying in general that wasps, insects don't tend to have really individual personalities. And when it's showing this buzzing and the precision and sharpness, it refers more to um, the overall beingness of a wasp. So what would you like, is there something you want for us to know about that precision or sharpness or the buzzing? So it's showing me that the buzzing that it and other like flying insects or even hummingbirds it's showing makes is a very different kind of vibration level than um, I can hear my refrigerator running in the background here. It's pointing at the refrigerator. Like um, it's a different vibration that comes from the animals than comes from machinery. Is there something, I feel like there's maybe a little bit more to that. Is there something else you wanna say? Well, it's showing how um, these, uh, the buzzing sounds that come from nature can actually be quite pleasant in human energy. Like if you, it's showing like if you're sitting in, in like a, a, some kind of insect or big bumblebee or something flies into your area, if you stop and kind of tune in to that vibration or buzzing that's coming from the insect, it actually feels kind of pleasurable in your energy. Whereas, um, it's showing it's showing me very specifically like um, so the way our dining area is set up um, the, the the refrigerator is quite close to where I sit 
and there's kind of this like buzzing that or that um, energetic buzzing from the machine from the refrigerator that comes and I feel it uh, along my back as I'm sitting there eating and it's reminding me like you know it's just not quite so pleasant in your energy and there's a real difference between machines and natural made sounds so would it be does it seem like it's more beneficial like is it beneficial for humans to be exposed to those kind of buzzing natural um, sounds yes and it's showing it's actually kind of pointing towards house cats and it's showing how purring kind of emanates a similar kind of thing and it this wasp belief is that that's one of the reasons people are so drawn to cats is because of the purring and the way it makes their energy feel really do you think people would like cats otherwise <laughs> okay this wasp has some opinions about cats it seems is there is there something else you want us to know um, about the buzzing or it's encouraging us just individual humans to kind of just tune in and notice how these things make us feel um, a lot of us are very kind of tuned out or it shows like wearing blinders when it comes to the energetic effects of electronics and it's showing how, you know, there's certain like segments of the population who are really sensitive to those kind of vibrations for machinery and Wi-Fi, 5G, those kind of things. And it's pointing like we would be really wise to pay attention to how modern technology is affecting that group of people. Because it's showing um, people who are highly sensitive kind of also represent like a sensitivity level in the greater animal population it's showing. So this wasp is showing like Wi-Fi and other um, energetic things being sent out into the atmosphere do have a, an effect on flying insects he's showing. And um, can you show me that again, that again please? Yeah, showing how if we would pay attention to how things are affecting these highly sensitive groups, we would be able to more effectively um, grow our technology in a sustainable way that is not going to damage and harm human energy. There's a lot of harm being done to human energy, this wasp is saying, and it's also affecting insect populations. There is something about that vibration that that comes from mach machinery, but more specifically, it's showing it's becoming more worldwide with Wi-Fi and, and 5G and just how um, it's showing me like even satellites from above, how there's these different wavelengths that are being emanated and it's saying humans just don't quite understand the full concept of how that is affecting the whole world. Do you feel like there is um, something that we, we could do about that or educate people or is it just about paying attention to the highly sensitive group? Well, we got to start somewhere and this wasp feels like it may take something um, really big happening before humans start to to pay attention it's almost like we have to hit that wall of oh wow that really didn't work i need to to switch and do something else there almost has to be something almost to the level of catastrophe before humans kind of shift their their thinking feels like there's a way that humans kind of get stuck in this um, narrow technology groove of like technology is always good, moving forward is always good, but uh, there needs to be more discernment is what this wasp is saying about how we're moving forward with technology. I'll take a moment here to check the chat to see if we have any questions for our wasp friend. And Facebook takes a little bit extra time to show up. So as a reminder, if you have questions, be sure to type them in. All right, my wasp friend. 
what else would you like to, to share with the world? Any kind of wasp wisdom? So the wasp is showing me how wasps are very good at working in groups. It's showing me there's, it's, it's almost like this little spot is how I'm seeing it, like this spot in the middle of its head where it's able to telepathically link up with all the other wasps in its group. So it's almost like this bigger consciousness, like moving the whole colony or group of wasps at the same time. We link up through that. It's almost like a telepathic connection. It's showing me, it's showing me that's part of what I'm using to connect and um, read the energy. The wasp is saying we have this same thing. It's much more uh, ancient, but it's also much more perfected is what this wasp is saying. Can you say more about that? So it's showing, so humans have had this connection in the past and it's not that it doesn't exist now. It's more like humans have just kind of started to put the blinders on about it. It's showing how like more, it's showing me like caveman times way far back where people were much more reliant on each other for survival. And there was this connection between this, it's, it's like the middle of the third eye tunnel, right? So it's, it feels like very much a part of the third eye, what this um, wasp is pointing to, showing how all humans in their, in their tribe or their, their group would be connected in this way. And there was much more precision in how they moved together as a tribe and much more understanding of different people's um, role in the group. And he's saying the wasps, as wasps, we've always had this. This is a very ancient reptilian insect kind of like ancient brain kind of thing that we as wasps have had for forever. And but it's showing how as humans evolved and became more individualistic, wanted to be more um, of an individual and separate themselves from the tribe sort of, that we've lost that ability to telepathically connect in with each other in that way. And he's saying it does still exist, like it's possible for humans to tap into that, but wasps have never lost that. And so because like thousands and thousands of years, we've continued to use this while humans have kind of separated and gone out. Um, it's just been more refined and become more perfected over time. He's showing how like it's that use of, um, I don't know if insects really have a third eye, but like this point that they're showing, it's showing in its head. Like it's even showing that's how it, makes its nest, that's how um, they organize to do these group activities. And it's just becomes so much more refined. Like he's showing like, look at the geometry or the precision in a wasp's nest. Like if you, like, okay, most people are just gonna come and knock them down. They don't want wasps around their house. But if you really stop and look at that nest, it's like, a geometrical miracle is what he's saying. And it's, it's through that point in our head that we're all connected to each other that we're able to do that. Okay, looks like we have a question coming in. So do you think that humans will get back to that telepathic connection and perhaps learn to be more functionally tribal as we are globally challenged? So he's showing it, it's, so it's possible for all humans, but that doesn't mean that they are going to actually connect into that. It's almost like he's showing a certain group of um, people kind of elevating themselves a little bit above the rest in some way. And it's, it's not like a judgment, like better or worse, but it's, it's like the people who want to be more awake and want to awaken that telepathic connection. It's absolutely possible but it doesn't feel like it's a possibility for the human race as a whole. Like he doesn't see, 
people becoming aware of this place in the middle of their head and then all of a sudden being feeling more connected to all of humanity. Um, it feels more possible on a smaller scale kind of thing where people within their tribes become more connected. Oh, it's showing me um, this TV show. I think it was on Netflix. Uh, it's called Sense8 where these like i think it's a group of eight are telepathically connected and they could um move in and like help each other he's showing it's more something like that where maybe a, gr a small group he's saying 10 no more than 20 like it's very difficult once it gets beyond a certain size of the group for this to really work um so it's it's it could work on a smaller scale do you feel like so I'm not sure about this question, if there, there's more to it here. Um, do you feel like it would be beneficial for humans to have more of this tribal kind of connection that we had more of in the past? It's showing yes, because there's the sense of, you know, instead of having your tribe anymore, it's more like you have your nuclear family. So maybe you have four people or two people, or it's, it tends to be more of just the small group. And um, showing there's, there's a level of once it gets past, is there a certain point it feels like? It feels like, so it's showing me once it gets past a group of eight, eight or more, there's kind of more of a, a fullness in the connection and how this kind of telepathic connection could work. Um, so it is showing these different groups of tribes, if you will, and, and showing how a bigger group of tribe could, could be more beneficial for humans. So it sounds like what you're saying is we become pretty dependent on this nuclear family model. And if we had maybe a bigger group of friends or family that we were reliant on, it might, um, that could help us get back to that or... It's a weird situation because it, it's saying that it could cause, those kind of things could cause um, fractioning as well because um, with the tribalism like, oh, well, my tribe is better than your tribe and leading to war kind of thing. It's a much bigger um, global perspective thing. Uh, can you, sh there was that thing at the end, show me that thing at the end again, please. So it is showing sort of like this council meeting kind of thing. What it is suggesting is, you know, we have our, our smaller tribes of say 20 or less. And you say is this is not unlike how they've tried to, you know, make up government, but having like some, like one person from the tribe kind of being a representative or the person that can connect in to a bigger tribe. So it's like, I see all these smaller tribes around in the circle. And then it's showing like pulling one person out of each tribe that forms more of like a, a leadership ring or circle above. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of what <laughs> humans have tried to do and it just hasn't worked out so well. Um, humans have a lot to learn is what it's saying. There's a lot more refinement and um, in how people are connecting to each other. It is showing it is showing like meditation and spiritual practices and and you know mindfulness these kind of things as being really effective it's showing how showing me humans as kind of these like metal machine robots kind of walking along and clunking and there's a heaviness to it and it's showing again the blinders of like just looking straight forward and not being able to connect into a bigger, a bigger thing. There's a rigidity in it that, yeah, the swaps is showing there's kind of, wow, they're the, like the track that we're on for humanity is a little bit um, heavy and metallic and or, or, I think thick. Okay, checking for questions again here. Okay. Wasp friend, is there anything else you might like to say about how we as humans can work together for the greater good of the whole?
it's showing it, it really allowing people to get the sense of a whole because oftentimes we're so secluded from other sections of humans like you know maybe americans we just have no idea what's going on in japan or you know again it's showing that thing with blinders and it's asking for there's a level of like education or understanding or expanding knowledge base like not always being so focused on just things that are happening around you, but being aware of, you know, this could be something as simple as reading a book from another culture or learning the history of another country. Um, it's interesting because it is showing this sense of like having a greater connection closer by, but also like understanding the connection of further away. And it's showing that's how these these smaller like 20 ish or less groups or tribes could really work is like one person is really interested in studying about Iraq or something. And then there's another person in there who is really interested in plants. Um, like there's a there's a knowledge base with the group that can be built and it, it's like the group kind of educates and holds each other. That would be kind of an ideal thing. That's what this wasp is saying. All right. Thank you so much, wasp friend. Looks like we're coming to the end of our time together here. So are there any final things you'd like to, to share with us or let our audience know? It wants to reiterate that thing it said about the buzzing at the beginning and how um, there's something really special and important in the buzzing and it really encourages people to tune into insects or like cats that do the purring thing. Yes, there's a lot to see there. All right, so thank you so much to everyone who's joined us here today. This has been so much fun to see what the animals have to tell us about their life, about humans, about everything. So thanks for joining us. I plan to continue these kind of indefinitely, so feel free to join us again sometime. And until next time, take care and be well.